All right, and we are live. So, good morning, everybody. Wall Street Generals. I appreciate each and every one of you for joining me this morning for our live traded sessions. In a few moments, I will be sharing my screen. You'll see, be able to see my screen and be able to follow along as I do trade and you know, kind of get a gist of my style and how I approach the market. All right, so uh, as we're looking at that Canadian dollar, um, I did see that this was a position that we could have sold, but like I said, I'm going to sit on the sideline for this actual position. And I even said if it drops 100 pips still, you know, I'm not going to even like budge. And the reason being is because of this. In 45 minutes, we have this EIA crude stocks exchange coming, and it's coming back negative, which means oil, the price of oil should fall. I'm already selling it. I have my take profit at 42 bucks. And, um, like, the price of the Canadian dollar should rise. Or the USD CAD pair should rise. All right. So let me show you what I see here and how I came up with that analysis. So, for one, <laughs> we have our previous, right? Our previous says negative 160, uh, 1.68. We're just going to use those two numbers, 1.6. All right. Now, with this, you see how it went from negative 1.68 to negative 0.7. Like, that's a huge drop, you know, huge drop, very bearish. And then now all we have to do is wait for the action. But... These two, we'll pay attention. 0 0.7, and then this is the bigger number, so price should go. Down with oil. Up. Canadian dollar and also um, up US dollar too because oil is doing what? Getting weaker, right? So when oil is getting weaker, the cat is getting stronger, the US dollar is getting stronger also. Okay? Bada bing, bada boom. Now, let's go back to here. And if I did sell that, I would be in profit. I think it was about 100 pips, huh? Yeah. <laughs> cool 100 pips. It dropped all the way down there, so it would have been 100 pips. And I missed that trade, but like I said, I wasn't getting in there because I'm waiting to see what's up with this EIA. And I already have a. Ooh, damn. That position cut back up on me, huh? All right, so I had a position in. I have a position in at oil right now. Hey Tyler, what's going on, bro? Uh, for the people that are not in oil, so you want us to jump on CAD when that um when that news hits, right? Uh, yeah, you can you can either be in the Canadian dollar or the U.S. dollar because it's coming nah, back nah. It's, it's coming back negative for the EIA uh crude stocks exchange. It's coming back negative, so you know um a, a weaker oil equals a stronger dollar and a stronger Canadian dollar. And I don't know the other pairs that affect. I think it's just those two. It may be more, but, you know, I, I don't know. So I, I won't even say <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right, so I'm expecting, like, I wish I would have got in here. But I'm expecting this whole structure right here. Like, if you look at the overall structure on the hour, it's starting to look almost like, what, head and shoulders, right? And I mean, really and truly, I use like basic candlestick knowledge. Like, <laughs> it's so basic. You just put it together and you're able to see, you know. And also, like, I pay attention to the prices over here, too, you know. So I know if it's down here or somewhere in this area, I should be buying up. And I know that if prices, you know, higher on the board, then I should be selling down, 
because Lawrence Tish, Warren Buffett, you know, most of the, the huge investors know. Buy low. Sell high, right? So here's our structure right here. It's kind of looking like a head and shoulders. There's that part. It looks like it wants to create that other shoulder before it continues its descend down. All right, so now it's coming back up. 30 bucks in profit. Oh, well. It is coming up. It looks like it wants to do its other shoulder before it drives back down. So we'll see. Great British Pound. I think that was where that selling position was. No, actually, it wasn't, huh? Mm, well, that's a doji, so definitely not touching it because even the market is uncertain right now. So if they're uncertain and I'm uncertain, then I can stay on the sideline. The only position I have in right now is the oil position. Again, Euro USD, it looks like it had a nice little, oh, nice. So it looks like a double bottom over here, right? Yeah. The price came to hit it two times, and I'll buy it up. I'm not even going to use a full lot. I use a 50 cent lot. Bait and switch, baby. Bait and switch. Let's see what's going on. Wait, I may wait for it to close and come down a little bit before it comes up. Oh, I'll, I'll throw it in now just to see if I can catch the bounce. I wish it would slip down more, but it doesn't look. Oh, there it is, 38. Perfect. Oh, I was just in profit as soon as I opened the position, too. Oh, well, there it is. There was my slippage, huh? Should have waited. Oh, well. They make me pay every single time. So I'm looking to get. I'm at 3.84 to about 100 and so pips, right? So 500 and be to take profit. Hey, that position is a winner too. Nice. Yeah, I'm in profit. Um, I put in a five cent lot. I'm in. I'm at uh one, 120 something. Nice man. Oh, oh there it is. A slip, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's slipping. Yeah, it's good, bro. I'm looking to get out. Um, it could be bigger, but I'm playing off the five minute chart. You know, if I was playing off of the hour, like really, um, this I'm I'm gonna show you what I'm going off of. Wait, so you wanna you want me to ride that one, ride it out until? until yeah, bro. Like, look, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you why I got in this position. All right. Now, it's up to you what you wanna do. All right, and you'll know what to do. But I'm gonna show you why I got yeah. in. You may be able to learn from it. All right. So, for one, that last hour, we had this crazy, we got a lot of movement right now, which I do like. I don't know why this damn pin not clicking. Hold on, guys. There it is. There it is. Yo, I actually like teaching like this. It's much easier, man. You don't even know. Because I can draw it out now. Like, I think it's, it's much easier like this than actually on the computer, um, trading on the computer. Like, because I don't know all the functions to draw out stuff and circle and stuff. You know, it makes it harder. Like, I can do boxes, but I think this is, like, much easier because I get the, you know, free reign, like a classroom board, whiteboard. All right, so you see this candlestick kind of right here? Well, both of these right here. All right, so let's act like this big one doesn't exist. Even though it's there, let's just take the bottom two. All right, so the bottom two, closing, this is a tweezer pattern. If you go look at the tweezer pattern, um, you'll see that usually it doesn't have this huge wick, but I'm just using the clothes, right? I'm just using the clothes and the two candlesticks wicks that are pointing where? North. The market is telling me where it wants to go. Is it not? I got two huge wicks pointing in one direction from the clothes. Even though the one previous to it has a wick saying down, it did come down. And you see it came down um, to touch its point to kind of create like a support and resistance area. And I'll draw that out too for you in a second. So up. So here is our. There it is. That's our support, and we find resistance right about. Here. 
All right, so here's my support and my resistance for right now. And I got a tweezer bottom saying that the market should go up. I got news coming up in 45 minutes that's coming back bearish with oil. Weaker oil equals a stronger dollar telling me up. Um, and then also, if you go check the five minute, you know, I kind of have like a scallop, you know, something. Um, I'll show you, show it to you, but just for right now, I'm going to just, you know, do the, the, what it looks like. It looks like a scallop like this, like it's going to go ahead and head up also. Now, I'm not watching the Euro USD um, for a few seconds, so we don't know. Um, I do not trade with stop losses. When I do, I always get my positions closed and yeah. So it dropped 20 pips on me. So, well, we know what it's supposed to do, so. Huh? I said we know it, what it's supposed to do. Yeah. But that's why I put in the. That's why I put in that 50 cent lot, that bait. You know, that's why I, I didn't. I didn't feel like, hey, I want to take a full position on it. I should have put in a quarter, but whatever. We'll see. But when it does. If it does come down lower, then I'm gonna go ahead and put two lots in, and I'll write it up um, about maybe 300 pips and get like 600 from that. We'll see what it does. All right, and let's go to oil now. Oh, well, it has. I feel like it's still coming down. Just in about what is that? Thirty minutes. The thirty minutes, so about seven thirty. So that's ten thirty. You guys, this time, and this position went against me forty pips. Looks like it may be going back up to where it's going. So that's that. Now let me see why I can't get this thing open. I am trying to see it on the computer screen, also to get a, um, some alerts and to get the high, the daily highs and lows. Because usually I do like you were seeing yesterday, Henry. Like you see, I switch between the mobile and the computer. I go to the computer to get the, uh, I don't know why she's not loading though, dude. Um, I go to the computer to get like my harmonics and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, like for those who are you know, new here just watching, I'll show what it kind of looks like. So, you know, that's how my setup looks without this right here. But I have my daily highs like these green lines or you see how it comes to touch one week low one week high, things like that, that tells me like, hey, you know, the low of the week, if it's the low of the week, I know to buy, right? It, because guess what? It just tapped the low of the week. Um, where this bomb hit right here was a three-day low. Because it hit the three-day low, I already knew what? Buy it back up, right? It's been, it's at its lowest point for three days. You buy low, you sell high. Like, it's, it's, it's even common in business too. You know, buy low, sell high. Like you want to buy at the lowest product. I mean, lowest price, and then sell it at you know, a, at a price more than what you paid for it. At least three times the amount. If you buy it for one dollar and you want to sell it for three, you know, so you make a profit and something to eat with. <laughs> All right. So um, that's that. Now I don't know how to the, why this meditator is not working. Oh, nice. So it dropped against me. 35 looks like 60 pips but I'm not even tripping the hour is about to start in three minutes that canvas is going to close and yeah I'm really not worried at all about that position <laughs> all right I thought that was mine Nope, it's not showing me no love. Let me try to get it up and running one more time. I'm gonna force it. I'm gonna force it to uh, kill it. run. Pin the taskbar. Pin the start. <clears throat> so. 
maybe it will come on. I'm just waiting to see. I'm trying it again. If not, then we're just gonna have to stick with the phone and uh, and do it like that. And I'm looking at the Euro USD, and that position is coming back. And also, my oil position came back too. So we'll go we'll go check on those right now, since the computer wants to act a fool and doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to work. So there's my uh, there's my position right now for the Euro USD. All right. That's coming back. And you playing off the hour? Nah, bro. This is the five minute right here. I bet. Yeah. On the hour, if I did play off the hour, bro, you see, I got my pin bar, right? I got my pin bar right there. And you already know, like, if I was really paying attention to this Euro USD, and I was up at when I was supposed to be up, then I would have, I would have caught this week all the way to the top, like all the way at the top. Maybe somewhere right here, maybe right here, and then caught it on the way down, and then I would have been able to catch this one, you know, at this point right here, and then ride it up. But you already know how I am. Like I hunt out the highs and the lows of the day, you know, and that's how I am. I I use. You know. Welcome back, Commander. <laughs> yeah, right. But you know, um. I always try to get in like I'm a risk taker. I wouldn't even let this thing close. Like I'm moving data, like but this is that's my style, you know. So I'm moving data like this. I just coming down, 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 and it's, you see it coming down. Like most people would be like, oh man, you know, sell, sell, sell. But then it's like, yo, it's going down. Like just watch the market reach the lowest point, you know. So if I see a trend moving all the way up, 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 um, like usually I don't just hop into the trend. Like for one reason. I'm always I'm uncertain and for two and for two like because of the how I trade I'm always looking for the highest high or the lowest low of the day to sell or to buy you know so at the lowest low I buy at the highest high I sell if my alerts and stuff were up it would tell me like hey it's the high of the hour it's the high of the day it's the low of the day you know it's the high of the week and when it does hit those points I just put my orders in and I write it out and usually you know it's really really good for me um uh, who's on here? Nicole and Benita. I think I gotta send you guys Henry too. Like fuck it, I'll give it to everybody. Um I'm gonna send you my setup that I use on a computer and you can like just go through it and kinda make it your own. You know? Uh, I use the harmonics and I got an indicator on there also. Like I got these bombs and stuff that show me um like the lowest lows are the highest points. You know, that's when those bombs come up. And it does repaint and uh when it does repaint, the only the only problem with it repainting is sometimes let's say you know you'll get a bomb right here. Well, let's say you get a bomb. Uh, I gotta find a repainted candle. Oh, right here, right. So let's say it goes up, it goes up. Once it hits this point on this candlestick, it'll be a bomb, right? And then you'll be thinking like, okay, sell. All right, it's not ready to sell just yet. But once it goes up again, it'll repaint to the higher point right here. You know, and then it'll give you that bomb, and then you know to sell it there. So that's what repainting is. So let's check on these positions really quick. So that one's a winner, and this one is a winner. They're both, you know, winning positions. Um, there's the oil. You see it traveling on its way. Here's the zero, uh, the zero buy, and you see this thing. Well, trying to, I don't know what it's doing right now. <laughs> The hour just started. Um, it closed in like a flaggish type pattern right here. I'll show you. Oh, shit. Never mind this kind of stick right here. <laughs> Look at these three. All right, so those three candlesticks. Now, if you look at your charts, you always see this type of pattern come up a lot. All right? Even if you're selling, you will see the same thing. When it does start to form, you could buy that. You could buy it when it starts to form. That pattern right there. It's like a bullish um I think it's called a it's the bullish flag. Um if I'm not right, oh well, I just recognized <laughs> the pattern, all right? So this is called a bullish flag, and with it, when you see it, then usually it means it's a continuation. Because if this, I'll show you. Look, 
let's say this was engulfing, right? Then the next candle over will be a piercing line. And then it'll turn into whoop, that. So, oh, oh, it comes back down again. <laughs> it's like we can't get no love over here today. Very volatile. I like that, though. It's always good to have a market, you know, with a lot of movement. Well, your USD is more in a consolidation mode. That's why it's going up and down. Yeah, we got to wait for this EIA crew stocks to hit in 26 minutes. Right. And That's what it's waiting for. It's waiting for the news. So what you're going to get is your up and downs and pullbacks or whatever. Some consolidation, some uh, support and resistance trading, huh? Yeah. I mean, you definitely have to be in and out if you're going to trade it right now. Yeah. Yeah, Tyler, I, I got out that trade. That's it. I had a uh, a five cent trade. I took it out at uh, at three something, at three dollars yeah. something. So there's the support resistance. Uh -huh. But me, like I stay, I stay in my positions longer. I gotta, I gotta get better at um at risk management. And I went over my plan yesterday, and I made it a lot more detailed. Um, I'm gonna go over it Thursday, and you guys will see like the whole thing come together. When I first did it. I just did like really quick, but I actually elaborated, you know, on like when it with my times and um today I didn't stick to my schedule. I was supposed to be up at three. I slept three hours past it. <laughs> but you know how that goes. So um got my support and resistance. I get guess we'll be looking to buy again at this point. One oh two fifty, right? 10250, 1.10250. Buy it back up and try to hit here. But I'm waiting for that EIA cruise stocks exchange right now to hit. So that's kind of why, you know, it is what it is. All right. Now let's go look at the Canadian dollar and see if we can get something over there. And when the EIA cruise stocks exchange hits, if you are trading it demo, use a stop loss because it might be a huge move seen the gap it was like 168 to negative 77 that's a huge gap <laughs> all right um, it is, oh nice there we go now we're in business with this oil thing all right so the Canadian dollar should be coming up it is coming up Me like when it's trending like this and it's already you know um, in a strike, like I don't really touch it. And the reason being is because I don't know. That's just me, you know. Like when it's already in the strike, I don't I don't really follow the stride. I just wait. Like I'm I'm like that's just me. I always wait, you know, on the sideline. Um, I feel like the Canadian the Canadian dollar will be going up. You know, the U.S. cat will be going up. Uh, it should be a huge burst. It may hit. 225, maybe 390, um, or it may not, you know, in 23 minutes, but we'll just have to wait and see. But I may be able to kind of draw something out on here that would give me a better direction to where the market wants to go. So give me a second so I can draw in these harmonics real quick. That is really bad. Mm -hmm. I think I did it backwards. Hold on. One, two, wait. X, A, B, D, C. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think I did it backwards. I'm not sure. I'm trying to figure out like the harmonics to it to do the position of um, getting in this thing to catch that burst. I do have something that's letting me know like that it's still going to be, I got like a lot of things confirming that it may continue to go up. But after that burst up, um, I may be trying to sell it down at the highest point of the day, you know, just because I would probably put like, you know, a five light in and go for 100 pips and then be out really, really quick just to catch that burst down as the bulls get tired of pushing up and then keep doing that over and over and over and over and over. All right. So, um, as of now, we kind of have uh, three, like three rivers almost. Um, if you want to put it all together, you got your scoop, your sinus scallop. trying to do a trend line in here. Oh, here is it. Here it is right here. Even though no wicks are like at the bottom. It's kind of insane. So I guess it's going to keep bouncing. gets here and here and here all the way up. Alright. Let me see if I can get this thing up. So 20 minutes and then after the EIA crew stocks, and I'm going to be done with this session today. Because like usually I'm done trading like maybe nine-ish my time and you know I, I'm going to just start writing songs and stuff for the day so, uh, so we're at and I am still going to try to get this damn Forex Broker Inc. to work on this computer because I want to see the highs and the lows it's going to be really really helpful for this EIA crew stocks exchange and then NFP is coming up in three weeks you guys so August 1 to actually this week on September or second or fourth. It looks like September fourth. And just let me double check for confirmation. What did David? I may not be in the panel, but I'm also watching. I'm just now hearing about you offering to share the high and low. Yeah, I am David. Um I am. All right, so now what was I looking for? Um, ah, NFP, September. All right, September fourth. All right, cool. So September fourth is when the NFP is going to release on that Friday, first Friday of the month. And we'll be trading that live also. Here was the, the last release, all right? 215. So when we see the, the, the NFP come up on your charts, it's going to be like this. It's going to stay 215 here at your previous, right? And then, um, like, now I know from me taking a loss last NFP, like, I understood what these numbers were and the distance between the numbers. Like, it was no dramatic change only 8,000 jobs. That was it. You know, it wasn't really like crazy dramatic. It wasn't like 50,000 or 100,000, which is eight. So that's why it wasn't, you know, a lot of movement. It didn't even move, um, like, NFP on one move was supposed to have like a, you know, 800 to 1,500 uh, pip move, like very, very strong, but it didn't really make that move. It made a nice move, but not what it was supposed to do. You know, so, um, yeah. We'll see in 15 days, and I will be, I'll be doing that and doing that also with you guys because last time I lost it in front of you, so now I gotta redeem myself and I gotta take that game home. It's just something. I, it's just me, you know. That's like my mindset. All right. Um, forex market hours. I'm like, I like that this is here. Now, this is how you can come and see, you know, your, your session times, and it's looking like all of the sessions are like cross overlapping right now, which is dope. All right, 
So right now we are in the New York session. Um, the last session was, do you have any love songs that you've written about for it? It's nah, David, but actually, um, like when you, when you, I'll, I'm going to release my album to you guys first. And also in a few weeks, I'm going to be doing a live Periscope with me recording live in the studio. So you get to see, you know, my whole process through um, when I go in, when I write the song, when I record it, how I talk to the producer, you know, and then like an in-studio performance after I record it. And inside of my songs, um, mm -hmm. I have a lot, of, a lot of knowledge about the foreign exchange market. Um, I throw in a few news events that's coming up. So people you could look at like Lawrence Tish, Daryl Guffey, Bill Lupchitz, you know, those type of people, like some of the greatest traders in the world. So when you do listen to it, then I want you to listen um, with an open ear. There will be a few curse words because, I mean, well, you know, I curse, not like a sailor, but <laughs> a few here and there, you know, nothing crazy. But just to keep the realism there, you know, and uh, yes, so I do have that about for coming. Now, I'm about to go back to these charts. And we're going to go. Damn. All right, so I'm looking at this Euro USD, and my bait and switch move should be coming up right here. It's getting closer. So I could have put in a point twenty five for the bait. I should have, and I had my chance to get out. But me, you know, me staying in, I did it. So now instead of it being, um. Instead of it being a negative position with me, as it is right now, I should be able to hurry up. Not hurry up, but I should be able to bust that bait and switch move out. I think the only reason it's dropping is because of the EIA about to hit. This is still about 100. It moved back up. So it seems like when the dollar is getting stronger, or the dollar is getting weaker, oil is getting stronger, and you can see it, you know, over here. The dollar is getting weaker, you see, and oil is getting stronger. So your USD is going down, and then oil is going up. But when that EIA hits, then we'll get something different. But I feel like right now, because they know that report is about to hit, then they're going to do all of these, like, false moves and stuff all around the board. So 13 minutes, you guys. And also, we got FOMC today, too, but I probably don't going to be trading that. Yeah. 13 minutes. And I'll just show you some tips and tricks and stuff that I, uh, that I do to help me get like a better analysis. Like, when I first got started, I, I was on this website faithfully um, every day, right? And the reason I brought up the whole community thing, like with everybody, you know, being together, working as a community, is because I will come here and I will log in, right? I'll log in and then I'll come down here and I'll always be in these forums and stuff. So let me find it. I'll always be in these forums, right? And I will come to interactive trading so I could trade with people. And they would give like their synopsis, and then we can go like back and forth. You know, I think his high risk is better. And then he's like, "Do not follow, have your own." You know, and they talk to each other like that. So um, I used to be in here all the time, like all the time. You know, um, yeah. So when U.S. bad news in front, Euro drop. It's a bad sign, bulls. Uh huh. Today may be the day. German GDP loss is a big deal, and you can kind of stay updated because you got like basically. Facebook for traders, you know? So, Tyler, who else? That's going to be something. You have it, that's still David. All right, so this is where we're at right here. And we wait. Got 13 minutes until the report hits. So, after these 13 minutes, then I'll be done with the, for the day. Um, after we're well not done for today, but done for the live training session today. And as you know, we do these every single day. Like I do thank Nicole um, for pushing me to do this too. And she was like, "Man, you should trade live." And I was like, "All right, you know, cool. I'm gonna start doing it all the time now." So, um, me trading live in front of you guys is pushing me out of my comfort zone, you know, which is pretty dope because, um, yeah, it's definitely pushing me out of my comfort zone. 
you know, and able to uh, give me like a better synopsis of who I am as a person and as a trader, you know, so I can make better decisions because like you can make a thousand shots in a gym, you know, when nobody's guarding you. That's easy. But when you have a defender in front of you, now the game just got harder. And as your defender gets better, then the game just got even that much harder. So then it's really like, well, do you really got that shot that you say you got? Yeah, we seen you bust on the court with nobody in front of you, but I see you on the court with, you know, in a live game setting. So I like this because it's pushing me out of that. So I'm like, yo, boom, now I'm in a live game setting, you know? So, um, I'm just waiting for just waiting for this uh, to hit. So that's what we're waiting for right now. And I'll just talk to you guys and interact until, you know, it does what it needs to do. So, um, what pairs are you guys trading right now, if any? Like, what are you in? I'm in Euro USD. Euro USD? Okay. I'm nice. looking to get in right now to uh, Euro USD. Euro USD? Okay. Yeah. What about you, Fanita or Kingsley or Liami? I'm buying uh, GBP USD right now. Great British pound. Nice, nice. Same here. Um, I'm doing a couple of pairs at GBP USD. I got in um, a while ago and I'm on the point fifty. But it's a demo and I'm already like almost a hundred. So it's going down. I'm selling. Nice. All right. So now let's see if this crew stocks report hits how we want it to. Um, if not, if not, if it doesn't hit, then I'm still not gonna have a stop loss on oil. Like I just, I'm just not. <laughs> All right. So I'm looking for it to drop. Um, as of right now, my calls have been like they're pretty good, you know. But still, like I want you guys to hunt. You know, I'm really trying to get you on a philosophy of being able to hunt. And like patience, what Shakita was saying yesterday, you know, um, I always catch myself saying I'm not this or I'm not that. Like even when I write music and my wife called me out on it, you know, yesterday, I was like, because I was writing a song and like I'm all into the groove, you know, and then I got writer's block and like writer's block is the worst <laughs> for real because you, you're like, you hear the music, you hear the beats to the songs and all my songs right now, they're like this all live instruments. So you'll hear the difference between my music and a lot of other music because like it's no um it's no uh false instruments, it's no uh like you know, um, synthesized music. It's all like real music, you know. So um, I was writing, I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm doing my thing, and then like I get stuck at this line, right? I forgot what line it was. I get stuck at this line and then I just get pissed off. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta finish this song and I can't finish this song and I got like super impatient. And then I'm like, you know what? I hate to write. This is why I go in the studio and I just freestyle because I hate to write. And my wife is like, you don't hate to write though. Like, don't say that. You don't hate to write. You, as soon as, if you go in the studio and they play the beat and it's time for you to do your thing, you write your verse in five minutes. You know, you do what you gotta do. So don't say you hate to write. Just, you know, say that you love to write and you love to write. <laughs> you know? So, um,. That's uh, where I am right now with patience, and I use that story to show you, you know, like I am human too. All right. So 7:22, uh, EIA is hitting in eight minutes. So I'm, like I said, I'm just gonna talk to you guys. If really, I don't feel like watching you starts and looking at the lines for eight minutes to be 100 with you. All right. So um, any any questions? Any updates? What's going on? Talk to me, you guys. Hey, Tyler, this is Fanny. I have a question. Um, I'm starting to pay attention a lot to the news. Is it a site that I can go to? I saw you were just on um, Forex Factory. Yeah. Um, so you have to log, create a, a um, account with them to get that information that you're getting. No, no, not at all. All right. So with news trading, um, any any Forex site you know has news. FXStreet.com, Forex Factory. Here, I'll I'll write them down here. FX Street. I'm typing it out to you in the chat. All right. FXStreet.com. ForexFactory.com. Uh, um, maybe this FX Crunch. Yeah, FX Crunch, bro. Definitely there. Forex Crunch and FX Street also. Yep, Forex Crunch. You know, so all you got to do is type in Forex News. You do not have to create an account with them. Um, it's totally free. It's information, you know, and uh, in the Asia information, sometimes you got to pay for information, but most of it is free. You know, if you look hard enough. In these forums and stuff, like uh, I think Ben Ben is like our tech guy, 
you know, and Ben went goes through these forums and finds like I'm if I'm like, yo, Ben, anything about the computer right now? He's helping me with the, with the website. You know, I asked for WordPress plugin for the membership, so I asked Ben, you know, like, hey, man, could you find some? And he went to some forums and found it. You know, so definitely you want to be in these forums and finding, you know, it's a lot of gold inside of these forums. All right. Like okay. even when, yeah, even when I was, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, because, um, remember I used to be in binary and I had go options like thin and stuff. They had some some, um, stuff today about the CPI, which I yeah. saw Jovan posted that. I don't know if it, it, um, actually made an impact on the U.S. dollar, but it was something else that was coming up. 1800 GM tea time. I don't know if that's one o'clock central. I'm not sure. It's the yeah. Federal Open Market Committee. Um, are you familiar with that? With the CPI? No, FOMC. FOMC. Yeah, that's going to have a, it might have a nice impact on the market, but it's not for, let me check the news. Like one o'clock, I think, was 18 GMT time. Yeah, three hours. So at 10 o'clock my time, so, well, Hold on. Eleven o'clock my time, so twelve one two. Two o'clock standard and then one o'clock central. Yo, two minutes, two minutes to this. Well, four minutes, bro. Four minutes. What you you said at at what time you come up? Seven thirty. So 10:30 if you're on Eastern Standard. I think oh, you yeah, eat like five, right? Uh, yeah, like five yeah, minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> it's all good, bro. You're excited, man. <laughs> and what exactly? What news is this exactly? All right, so this is the EIA Crude Stocks Exchange. Um, with oil, like it's one of our big reports in oil. You know, when it comes out, it's saying it's negative. So we should be looking at a negative reading in oil. All right. Um. I'm just looking off the previous and the consensus. The actual has not hit, so I do not know. Like I said, I don't trade with stop losses. So if it goes against me, then it goes against me. You know, and I'm just going to double up and go the opposite of whichever way it went. But, like for you, I say uh, if you're trading it like a demo, you can trade it how you trade. Um, if you want to use a stop loss, you can. If you're trading it live, uh, I would suggest one. And I would suggest, you know, a quick in and out. And then um, I think Nicole may have something to say about like risk management and stuff because that's like, you know, she's a beast at that. Hey Tyler, I was on here, um, but just wanted to ask, what are you thinking that it's going to do? Go down? Yeah, I feel oil going to go down. No, I feel oil going to come down. And I feel like it's going to come down only to reach, um, only to come in touch. Let me see. It may, it may hit that $41 point again. That's, it may want to come down there again. I'm not sure. Um, okay. I'm about to All right, let me, let me check oil right really quick. I'll be able to tell you in a second. Yeah, it may come back down. Here, let me pull my screen up too so I can show you what I'm talking about. La, 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 da, da, da. All right, so I'm on the four hour chart right now. As you can see, um, it's looking like oil wants to come down anyway after this previous candlestick right here. Not that one. Three minutes, you guys. So it looks like it wants to come down. I, I'm getting out at this point, 42. But it may come back, try to tap, you know, that point right there before it goes back up and, and uh, oil is on the rise, you know, again. I don't feel like it's going to be back at $100. I, I don't just, I don't know if it's ever going to get back there. Um, but we may be back, you know, in the $60 range. But we'll see when OPEC releases their new report and let us know what's going on. All right, so this is where we're at right here. This is why I feel like you know it's gonna do what it's gonna do. 728, two minutes. I'll check those positions again. So that's 150 the zero USD. Um 
That's looking like one, one, one point, two point, three point, maybe on the way up. So we'll see in two minutes. Now we just wait. All right. Well, one minute. Like I said, I'm expecting it to go down, and uh, really all we could do is watch and see, because it's not like we could control the market or anything. All right, one minute to prime time. Let's see what this EIA thing does. I feel like setting the stop loss, but I don't ever set stop losses, so I'll probably not. And if you are trading this live, um, set a stop loss or just get out super quick if it goes against you. Right. I should have scout your USD. I couldn't make a few bucks in there, but whatever. Oh, the Canadian, the Canadian dollar too. Uh, let's see what it does. I'm watching on five minutes. Hey, there we go. Uh, uh, hit your body smarter. Uh, <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Pay me, baby. Pay me. Pay me. Uh -huh. Yo, I really might get out like right now though. Uh, yeah. Quick, cool. Oh, that was that. I could have got it at 41, but oh well. That's all I wanted. So there's your EIA. Oh, 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 and this one right here. All right, there it is on the way back up. That was that little something. Crew still dropping. I could have stayed in all the way to 41, but really, I, I didn't even want to. Who said no? No, she, she don't have an option to say no. Tell, get dressed and go. Hurry up and come back. <laughs> Dang, hey, look at that EIA. If I would have kept it in at 42 and let it hit 42, it seemed like it would have hit my 42, huh? The take profit? Oh, well. I still got my bread off of it, so I'm not even tripping. I can't complain. Now I'm just watching it just to see it play out. But as you can see, that's how you read your news report. So, look, anytime EIA crew stocks comes back, you see how to read it now. I did it for you live in front of you, so it should be no questions about, yo, how do I do this? How do I read the news? We went over the news. We went over how to how to understand it, and then, boom, it just played out for you in front of you. Now, this Euro USD, that's another beast. Um, <laughs> I'm expecting this thing to rise, you know, on weaker oil data, but it's not even giving me the full rise that it should be giving me. But, I mean, oil was affected, so I guess that's all that matters, right? This Euro USD. Um, I could do the uh, the double, what is that, the bait and switch, but I'd probably just let this thing ride out and let that point fifty hit its point, you know, 200 pips away, and that would that'll be um, that. Uh, looking for more positions up on the field. Oil right now is 15, and it should still be dropping. Like, on this daily, it should be coming down on my four-hour. This is the four-hour. Like, where do you think oil is going to go for the rest of the day? <laughs> Let's be 100 here. So you can either catch the long-term trend or go to the five-minute and then catch the turnaround, the bounce, and then ride it back up. Um, I wouldn't ride it back up right now, but maybe in like an hour or two when everything settles, and you can go ahead and take oil back up to the top. All right. So this was a live broadcast. Um, my name is Tyler Kendall Moore. AKA the Tyoyanir. I am a trader and I am an entertainer. And this will wrap up our adventure today, Trading Live. We traded oil, um, WTI crude to be exact.
If you're a trader of Forex Broker Inc., then it will be CL September 15. Um, we traded the Euro USD. We looked at the US Canadian dollar and we looked at the Great British Pound US dollar. All right. Every single morning in the morning, I'm going to get up, I'm going to do these live trading sessions, and I'll be trading with you guys. Um, I'm going to make it a pack for me to do that. I feel like, you know, this is really the bread and butter right here, being able to see it actual, you know, in front of you. Okay? So, I'm about to stop the hangout, and then, um, like, if you want to stay after and ask me any questions, you know, I don't mind answering your questions. Okay? So, here's our hangout. I'll be posting this, uh, this replay in a group for those who missed it, for the people who missed it and weren't able to attend this morning, and those who had to go to work. All right? So you guys just stay on here while I, in this hangout, and uh, yeah.